Hello and welcome to our special edition of Adam Ashley's project. I'm Anastasia Lavrina and our special guest today is a member of Azerbaijani parliament, Samet Seydev, who is also chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on International Relations and Interparliamentary Ties and the head of the Azerbaijani delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Hello, Mr. Seydev, and uh, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. It's a big pleasure for us to talk with you about a special topic for our today's edition. It's EU-Azerbaijan cooperation, a new era in bilateral relations. And the first question I would like to ask you is about energy agreement, which was signed between two sides by President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and uh, President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, on uh, July 18. Please tell us more about the possibilities opened in front of our countries and how two sides may work closely on energy issues and not only. Thank you for this very essential question. This is really in a very special period of time has come to Azerbaijan. Could you imagine uh, European Union is a major partner, economic partner for Azerbaijan, and we delivered approximately, for time being, for today, delivered approximately 7 billion cubic meters uh, of gas to Europe. And we are going, according to this decision, we are going not only to double that, but triple our delivery uh, of gas to Europe till 2027, uh, to 20 billion cubic meters of gas. This is huge, uh, this is unbelievable, and this is another vivid example how Azerbaijan uh, is important for European uh, Union and for European countries. Uh, as uh, I said, the new period of time uh, of our relationship with European uh, Union has come because of two major reasons. The first one, of course, is a new reality which has been created by Azerbaijan, and uh, especially after liberation of uh, occupied territories, after patriotic war. Uh, these new realities uh, is really uh, uh, essential for understanding where we are, in which direction we are going, what we are going to do, with whom we are. And that's the first reason. And the second one is a new reality within the Europe itself. Alternative uh, sources they're looking uh, for. Alternative sources, uh, plus um, crisis of standards, of values, if I may say like that, within the Europe. Because of, first, a war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, which started on February 24 this year and because of double standards which unfortunately we uh, can see uh, within the uh, European institutions. Uh, this uh, mixture of uh, factors or approaches created new reality in Europe and new reality in Azerbaijan. A new reality and in Azerbaijan I already mentioned uh, because we restore international law here in Azerbaijan. New reality in Europe because of violation of international law and values which promoted by European Union because of the war, because of the double standards, because of the approaches and challenges which Europe has. And uh, very interesting, if I may say like that, paradoxical period of time came to uh, our land. And uh, those who are uh, in a very critical position towards Azerbaijan uh, just now try to rethink about the role of Azerbaijan to Europe, about the efforts which Azerbaijan have done for Europe, about the future of relationship between Azerbaijan and European Union. That's and, very interesting and very sorry yes, for disturbing you. You know, uh, some experts, I would say, uh, in Armenia and not only, are saying that Azerbaijan is trying to use energy potential to change the position of the international community towards Azerbaijan. But to be honest, Azerbaijan is not using, but offering the help for the European Union to diversify its energy policy, to find new alternative sources. And I guess what we saw in the recent days, it's a real proof of that. Because immediately after this important visit of Ursula von der Leyen to Baku, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs Yehud Baramov went to Brussels, where he held a lot of meetings with uh, European politicians and even with the Secretary General of NATO. 
And in all of these meetings, the politicians were saying that Azerbaijan is an important and strategic partner of the European Union. Not, Not only like because energy. of energy. Exactly. Yes. Please tell us more about this particular case. You're absolutely right. And another, uh, another example of uh, importance Azerbaijan, not only from the point of view of energy, is a visit of uh, representative of the European Parliament. Uh, because Parliament is always fighting for human rights, democracy and the rule of law. And that's another very important signal, message, that uh, European Union is dealt not only with energy, but with all spectrum of uh, um, interests which Europe has and which Azerbaijan try to present to our partners and friends in Europe. This is market economy, this is of course energy, this is good governance, and this is human to human relationships which includes human rights, democracy, rule of law, and the role of the parliament from this point of view is an essential one. You know, uh, the, re the, the current and modern world is a very uh, dynamic and it's changing so rapidly. Uh, we can see that uh, instead of uh, philosophy of superpowers, new philosophy is coming to the agenda the new superpower is a public opinion. And from this point of view, what, what is really essential, that after the patriotic war, after the 44 days war, we not only created new reality, but we, we are able to explain and to do our best in order uh, to present this new reality to the rest of the world. Just recently, you know about that, that the flag of the United Nations has been raised in Shusha. Exactly. Together with Azerbaijan. Together flag. with Azerbaijani flag. And uh, all international organizations, communities, they try to help Azerbaijan, to demine it, uh, to uh, do their best in order to recreate liber liberated territories. Of course, it's not enough for time being, but we have been waiting much more. You think that now the European Union can be more active in these restrictions? Of course, process? of course. This is not only because of energy, but because European Union is looking for answers to the questions which they are not able to answer, but Azerbaijan already answered. What kind of questions? International law is prevailing. Uh, separatism, terrorism. And this kind of, uh, if I may say like that, uh, unacceptable for European values, things should be withdrawn from agenda. And we can see that any side, any country which is going to play game with separatism, just now in a very difficult and uh, in a troubled position. And that's why Azerbaijan gave uh, real proofs that if you are talking about international law, you should withdraw from agenda. You should do your best in order not to please those who try to create problems for values which you presented to the rest of the world. To remove, to take out all the double standards. All the double standards. And that's why, for example, yesterday, you have, we have mentioned about that, yesterday during the, during the meeting between uh, the president of Azerbaijan and the representative of the European Parliament, uh, that was very, very interesting discussions about double standards and about the attitudes towards Azerbaijan. Exactly, that's my next question I wanted to and ask. Yeah, that, that, that's unbelievable. For example, uh, European uh, Parliament just recently, in March actually, adopted absolutely biased, one-sided, false, uh, according to false information, a resolution on destruction of uh, so-called Armenian cultural heritage in Karabakh which is absolutely uh, vice versa. They put things upside down. We lost everything. All Azerbaijan heritage had been destroyed uh, to the ground, absolutely. Uh, that's enough to see Ardam or Fizuli or other cities which we just recently liberated. But what we can see, instead of sending experts, instead of preparing the special reports about this vandalism, Armenian uh, lobby and those who are in favor of this 
not so understandable, if I may say like that, approaches presented as an urgent debate. You know what doesn't mean urgent debate? It means that yesterday somebody came with some papers mm -hmm. and the day after tomorrow the parliament is ready to adopt, which is absolutely out of reality. Of course. Yes. And that's why we call European Parliament, we call our partners from European Parliament to be serious, to withdraw double standards from their activities, to think what we have done for Europe and, for example, for uh, what Armenia is going to do or what Armenia already have done, has done uh, for, for, for European community. We, security, energy security, first of all, values, we are sharing the same values. We are doing our best in order to, not only for oil and gas. Logistics. Yes, not oil and gas, but for logistics. Transport communication. Transport communication. You you should take into account that on the north, from the north part of Azerbaijan, uh, the major countries under the sanctions, including the Russian Federation, on the south, Iran also under the sanctions. The only way. To the only Asia. way to Central Asia, the only way to communicate with the east, is uh, Azerbaijan. And that's, that's why, why this is the second. Yes, this is the second. Not only energy, but logistics. The third, which is also very important, uh, renewable energy. You have mentioned about that, and it's really very interesting. We uh, the, uh, we have signed the president and, uh, of Azerbaijan and uh, the president of the European Commission, also around the lake signed the Memorandum of Understanding between Azerbaijan and the European Union about the uh, intention to increase delivering Azerbaijani gas to Europe uh, up to 20 billion cubic meters. But, uh, you know, the program which the European Union has, that's a program for uh, renewable energy, which will uh, put in force in 2030. Yeah. And in 2030, Azerbaijan will be ready to deliver energy from renewable, you know, renewable energy from Azerbaijan to Europe. Because we are going to start it now, not only in Azerbaijan, in Baku, but in liberated territories. And from this point of view, our cooperation is uh, close connected not only with energy, but with all other uh, things which are so important for Europe. You know, so it's very interesting, you know, the important issue which was raised during these meetings all. Um, it's about the trilateral statement from November 2020. Two key points are still not being implemented. The first is withdrawal all Armenian troops from the uh, Karabakh region of Azerbaijan, where the Russian peacekeeping are staying now. And the second is opening all transport logistic communications on the corridor, as I already mentioned, which is very, very important for the European Union as well. And uh, considering the growing role of the European Union in cooperation with Azerbaijan in different projects, etc., probably the European Union also can make a pressure on the Armenian government saying that we support peace, stability in the region, and all of the points which were signed by your side have to be implemented. You're absolutely right. Uh, we actually have been waiting this kind of attitudes toward Armenia. Uh, and uh, plus, we are in favor to see direct communications and negotiations with Armenia. Of course, uh, under the auspices of uh, European Union, under the auspices of Charles Michel, for example, as you know, in December, in the middle of December, 15th of December, will be summit of the Eastern Partnership uh, Program countries. And uh, we hope that. Uh, the next meeting of the President of Azerbaijan and uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan uh, will be there uh, because this is really very essential to have direct communication. We are absolutely open to these kind of communications with our Armenian colleagues, but unfortunately in order to, 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 to be serious, uh, they have to be an independent. Uh, Azerbaijan is an independent state. Uh, we have our position, we have our vision and we try to defend our national interest. And that's why we are so strong with our ideas, our intentions to establish strong relationship with the European Union. 
Unfortunately, we are not able to see the same attitudes from Armenia. Armenia tried to play game with these negotiations. They are coming to negotiation and then they try to withdraw the ideas which they already mentioned about that. That's why I think you're absolutely right to mention. Uh, we have this trilateral agreement and we have uh, exact things which we have to do. And first of all, in order to achieve the peace, of course, Armenia should withdraw military forces from, exactly. from Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, still Armenian military forces in, Arme in Karabakh, and uh, that's a great obstacle for future negotiations, communications, discussions, etc. Plus, uh, there is exact item about the Zangezur uh, corridor, an opening communication. And it's not so fair. Uh, Armenians today, they have absolutely, without any kind of preconditions, without any kind of obstacles, access to Karabakh. And the Armenians can go and leave using Karabakh the corridor. using the Russian corridor without any kind of problems. Plus, we gave this possibility to deliver goods to Armenians who are leaving because this is our citizens. And goods and other equipment and needs to Armenians who are living in Karabakh. But that, that's not so fair. We are not able to deliver the same goods to Nakhchivan, to people who are living and the blockade. And that's why this corridor is essential one. Everybody is in favor uh, on the words, but Armenia is not ready to uh, fulfill this uh, obligation. And this is obligation. And uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan has signed on the treatment, on the trilateral treatment, that this communication will be open. Azerbaijani side uh, has done everything. We already uh, built the uh, uh, railway and road to the border of Azerbaijan. But unfortunately, Armenia is not. And from this point of view, of course, we are ready to communicate, we are ready to do everything. But Armenia has to understand their responsibility. Because, of course, we are patient, we, we can't wait. But how long? How long? How long? That's a, that's a real question. And that's why this direct communication between Armenia and Azerbaijan under the auspices of the European Union, especially with participation of President of European Council, Mr. Charles Michel, is so important and essential. I, again, I said that we have been waiting uh, positive signals from Armenia. Actually, we got some positive signals from Armenia. They already said that they accepted even five principles of Azerbaijan uh, for peaceful treaty, peaceful treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan, yes. but they just said about that and nothing they have done about that. It's That's more words, a problem. But we need to have more practical. Yeah. One more final question I have to you. It's about the position of some uh, members of European Parliament and politicians yes. in Europe who are saying that yeah. there is no enough information about the situation in the region, in yeah. Europe, in the United States. Yeah. I'm very sorry, Azerbaijan is independent yeah. government for 30 years. Are they really don't know about uh, the situation? They are not so sincere with these kind of uh, approaches towards Azerbaijan. Uh, most of them, majority, they quite clearly understand the situation. They are very well educated and clever people. Part of them, unfortunately, under the influence of Armenian diaspora. Unfortunately, Armenian diaspora has absolutely different agenda than Armenia as a state, than Armenians who are living in Armenia. Um, Armenian diaspora, because of war, because of blood, because of the clashes here in this region, got everything. Uh, parliamentary seats, uh, possibilities to influence to the leadership of the countries where, where they are living. And that's why with absence of this conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, they might lose everything. And that's why they are in favor to see more clashes, more difficulties, more problematic issues in our region. And that's why that's a very, if I may say like that, smart tool to show who is a must in the region, to manipulate, to divide and to rule. And that's why uh, our our strong message to our European colleagues uh, that uh, they should withdraw these double standards from the agenda. If uh, they are going to communicate with Azerbaijan, if they can see Azerbaijan as President of European Commission, Madame Ursula von der Leyen said, as a reliable and strong partner, they have to understand that strong and reliable partner 
deserves absence of double standards. And fair attitude. And fair attitude toward the country. Not is not uh, possible to communicate with your partner if your partner is not sincere. And from this point of view, Azerbaijan always is absolutely sincere, open. We do not have uh, something to hide. We are absolutely open, especially after war. And I think, as I said at the very beginning of our very interesting discussion, new period of time has come for Azerbaijan and for Europe. We already uh, find solution of some problematic issues which we had here in this region. And I think Europe has come to the period of time when right answers will be, will be uh, answered uh, in the nearest future with relationship to Azerbaijan. Uh, these fair attitudes will be in favor of Azerbaijan and European Union. Exactly. Let's hope. And thank you so much, Mr. Sida, for joining other Majlis today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Just to remind you, watched other Majlis Media Project. I'm Nastasia Lavrina. Stay with us and see you in the next edition.